Katakana, A History It Uses and Implications for Education, a film by Scott Charles Meach. With the current rate of globalization, linguists do not have to look far to find cases of language contact. These days, most developed countries also require a second language to be taught from elementary school. More often than not, that language is English, which has allowed me to support myself while living in both Japan and Korea uh, as a teacher. A certain level of second language proficiency is required to enter the majority of high-level post-secondary educational institutions, especially in Japan. It can be argued that no country has come up with a more novel way of balancing the need to achieve communicative efficiency and the need to preserve a distinct sense of group identity than the Japanese have with katakana. Katakana acts as a barrier for new words introduced to Japanese by writing them in a different script than what is used to write traditionally Japanese words. Uh, see the examples on the right of computer and beer. Uh, in this documentary, I will give a brief history of writing systems in Japan, followed by an explanation of how katakana came to be used exclusively for transcribing foreign loanwords, and finally discuss the implications for teaching students who come from a culture that employs a syllabic writing system. There were no writing systems used in Japan until the 5th century, when Chinese logograms were brought over, which are now referred to as kanji in Japan. Chinese and Japanese are genetically unrelated languages. The use of these logograms was quite an inefficient way uh, to represent Japanese grammatical structures. Uh, this led to the eventual development of two syllabaries, hiragana and katakana, in the Heian period. Uh, the katakana syllabary symbols were taken from simplified parts of Chinese characters and are immediately recognizable in Japanese writing by their bold and simple lines, while hiragana are considered to have a more appealing and artistic feel to them. Can you tell which are which in this chart? Well, hiragana are in blue, and katakana are in red. Were originally developed as a reading aid by Buddhist monks and used as a mnemonic signs next to complex or difficult kanji to aid in the phonological understanding of the characters. These mnemonics are now referred to as hurigana and are often used in children books and Japanese comics or manga for the similar purpose of helping younger students understand difficult kanji characters. Although these days, hiragana are used more often. Can you see the smaller symbols next to the larger kanji? Those are hurigana. Women were not permitted to study Chinese or kanji during the Heian period, so hiragana was developed to be used by women for general writings. Men did not have to learn hiragana, but it was necessary if they wanted to write to women and therefore became used more often than katakana in Japanese society during this period. As mentioned earlier, uh, hiragana are also believed to be more aesthetically pleasing than the bold, simple lines of katakana, and so have been chosen for the Japanese art form of shodo or what we refer to as calligraphy in English. In the Kamakura period, due to the increasing influence of Buddhism, uh, katakana became more widely used than hiragana for most literary forms, but began to fall out of use during the Muromachi period, uh, possibly in part due to this period being when many of Japan's most representative art forms began to develop, such as shodo. Jesuit missionaries arrived in Japan during the 16th century and brought with them printing devices, which they used to print their religious materials using a combination of hiragana and kanji, which had become the standard in the century prior to their arrival. During this time, many new products were traded with Japan by the Dutch, and words such as bread and tobacco were introduced into the Japanese language, uh, often maintaining the Dutch pronunciation of the word. During the Edo period, the majority of literary material was written mainly in hiragana to accommodate less skilled readers who did not have access to education required to properly read and understand kanji.
You see, the required time to learn close to 3,000 separate kanji cannot even be compared to the time necessary to learn the 46 symbols from either of the two Japanese syllabaries. During the Meiji period, government policies were implemented with an emphasis on catching up with the West, which were seen as much more advanced. One policy was an attempt to increase the literacy rate among the people. To accomplish this, the number of kanji needed to be learned in school were greatly reduced and an emphasis on hiragana and katakana in early education became the norm. There were even policy proposals which went as far as to abolish the use of kanji altogether in order to increase the general literacy rate of the commoners, although these were never implemented. During this period, it was often katakana which was taught first, followed by hiragana, and then finally the beginnings of basic kanji. Most newspapers followed suit and dropped the number of kanji used in articles, replacing most with katakana. Previous to the Meiji period, there were major differences between both spoken and written Japanese, and written forms were quite difficult to learn. Often, kanji were written in their original Chinese language grammatical order, an inverse form of Japanese. This was considered archaic, so these reforms were made, helping to simplify and limit the use of kanji and increasing the focus on the kana syllabaries. Uh, this resulted in a system where literature was written with a mixture of kanji and hiragana, while official government documents were written with a mixture of kanji and katakana. This continued until the beginning of World War II. During the ultra-nationalist period in Japan, most of the policy changes in regards to script usage were based on the purity of the language. Uh, the Japanese have something they call kotodama, or spirit of language, a belief in the special and inescapable spirit of their language. Japanese people believe that their language is not only unique, but sacred, and that it requires protection from contamination of foreign influences. So during this period, there was a push, push to purify Japanese of loanwords from Western languages, and many were replaced by their Sino-Japanese counterparts. An example of this can be seen in the word for baseball, uh, beisuboru, which follows the Japanese pronunciation of the word, was officially replaced with the word yakyu, and given a set of kanji as a further way of protecting traditional Japanese. The influence of this policy can be even seen in Korea, as the word yagu made its way into popular usage over the word baseball in Korea during the Japanese occupation of the Korean Peninsula. Problems arose with the usage of these Sino-Japanese words, especially in the military, as the less educated soldiers did not understand many difficult kanji which the language Puritans wished to bring into full usage. Unable to read the kanji used for writing the names of weapons and other military goods, a number of accidents caused by this illiteracy occurred. This resulted in the military making its own script reforms, which allowed for the use of foreign loanwords written in katakana, which then later became adopted into more widespread use. After 1945, English loanwords flooded into Japan, along with many aspects of Western culture, and were written in katakana. Due to this increase of loanwords, the National Language Council created rules for properly transliterating loanwords into Japanese in 1954. They created a standardized ways to spell foreign loanwords using katakana. Before these rules were made, there were many different and unconventional spellings used to transcribe these words based on varying perceptions of the correct pronunciations. Also after World War II, the kanji hiragana writing style was adopted as the norm for writing official documents and contemporary literature. Previous to 1945, the two t syllabaries, hiragana and katagana, had similar roles in Japanese writing, depending on the time period. After the war, the ultranationalist policies were no longer acceptable politically due to the American op occupation, but they still pervade culturally. And so, with the increased influx of English loanwords caused by the cultural contact situation as a result of the American occupying force, rules were created to preserve the integrity of the Japanese language. 
No longer being able to fight off the influence of foreign loadwords words entering the language, katakana was chosen as a system of compartmentalizing these words. All loan words were now to be written and represented using katakana, following the lead of the military during the war. 